Hi guys, Nash here. Today I'm going to talk to you about Sergio Nobre's diet. Uh, actually, I'm going to answer some questions because there were a lot of questions asked uh, when I posted this video regarding Sergio Nobre and his diet <clears throat> philosophy. Yes, it is controversial, I have to say. <clears throat> there is nothing regular, uh, again, nothing so called scientific about his diet as, as people like to. To call it today, but uh, the fact is that regardless of his controversial controversial training method and his controversial diet, Serge Nubre managed to end up with with a body that we can we, we never uh, never ever seen since him. It's just something like a God's given physique. Yes, uh, you can argue. Uh, is because of his genetics. Yes, he had amazing genetics. This is nothing to deny. But you can also see his pictures when he started training. He wasn't anything impressive. He was just a good-looking uh, young man uh, with, with, with some not necessarily good proportions, but he had some pleasing, pleasing physique. But then <clears throat> Serge Nubre managed to develop absolutely perfect body. I mean, I, I've been... Um, impressed with him since the day one, since the day I actually saw his first thought photograph in the magazines. And then I, I was lucky to, to go to and meet him. I was I met him twice. I was in Paris in 83 and 84. I spent five, six weeks each year. And my the purpose of my visit to, to Paris was obviously to, to train in his um, Serge Nubre International Gym. This is how it used to be called uh, in those days in, uh, in the... the it's called um, uh, Villiers uh, Quarter in Paris. Uh, I was there every day. I knew exactly. I would ask him what time you're training tomorrow. I'll be there. And uh, it, I, I talked to him as much as, as I could have. I, I've, I've watched every single training session he did because it was so impressive. It was like, you know, uh, learning from the God. You can't, you can't get better than that. So I was there every day, you know, soaking as much as I possibly could have. Uh, and also we talked about nutrition. So I remember in those days I was uh, very much taken away by <clears throat> Mike Menzer's heavy-duty training system. Uh, in America they, they started popularizing those <clears throat> extremely heavy, uh, heavy tr type of training with heavy weights and lower number of reps. And I was taken away by that simply because, you know, you start getting bigger and you start getting stronger, and you feel really, really good about yourself. And uh, how how can you not do that? So it was fine up to the point. But then I uh, <clears throat> I ended up not looking very impressive. So uh, there were people that looked much better than me. But then when I came across Nubre and uh, some other guys in the gym, I remember Eduardo Kavak was there, and... Uh, some other names, Terry Pastel as well, I think. Uh, I just couldn't believe it because they looked so different than, than, than me. That I, it looked like we are doing different type of sport. We are not doing the same thing. So I was, I looked more like I don't know, some power lifter, wrestler, or something like a big, uh, even chubby. I wasn't. I couldn't see my six pack. I had a bit of fat on my on my you know waist. <coughs> and then these guys. They were all in their tank tops, ripped, veins popping out, and I just can't, couldn't believe it. So, I, I talk about his training uh, method in the previous video, but this time I'm going to focus on the diet. So, when I asked Serge, I said, Serge, I would like to talk to you about the di diet. He looked at me and said, yeah, it's very simple. He said, there is nothing much to do with it. He said, what, what do you do? How much do you eat? What do you eat? I said, well, I eat like, you know, five, five six times a day. Every meal has about 50, 60 grams of carbohydrates, maybe 40, 50 grams of protein, some fat. Um, not necessarily very clean. I like to have here and there something like uh, ice cream or, or chocolate or maybe some bread, stuff like that. And uh, I said, you know, I'm 110 kgs in those days. And uh, obviously, I'm not very happy the way I look. And he said to me, well, the way you look is the way you eat. So you can't expect to be looking better because you're eating a lot and you're eating a lot of wrong food as well. So, the, for example, he said to me, 
I mean, he said to me, why do you eat all these carbs? I said, carbs, you know, you need carbs for energy. And he said, who said you need carbs for energy? I, I do not eat any carbs. And I'm training every day, twice a day. So I said, what are you talking about? Well, my, I do a lot of sets. And he was standing in front of me. I mean, you know, imagine you're talking to a God. And God says something to you. And now, now you want to argue about it. You simply cannot because he is the proof that his training method and his uh, and his uh, diet are obviously uh, I, I don't want to say perfect but they are doing 100% good to him because the way he looked and uh, he looked unreal simply like that and then I said okay so I said so what, 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 what should I do what should I eat and he said to me just eat like everybody else in the gym look all these guys they're all in shape they, they have no issues, they don't do any cardio, they come to the gym, they don't even train that often. And these other people, they look amazing. They're like, everybody has six-pack for me that was like, you know, yeah, yeah, one day maybe I'm going to have six-pack. But <clears throat> uh, he said, I personally, he said to me, eat 10 to 12 pounds of red meat a day. I said, 10 to 12 pounds of, of red meat a day? He says, yes. And... Uh, I said, just just red meat. He said, yeah, just red meat. I said, what about eggs? Oh, he said, eggs are great. You should eat eggs. Nothing wrong with them. I said, how many do you eat? And I remember this uh, Nubre saying, uh, well, uh, I don't eat, eat eggs. I said, why? He said, because I don't like them. Fair enough. What about fish? Great food. You should eat fish. How much do you eat? I don't eat it because I don't like it. So basically, he ate what he liked, and he has felt that that food is compatible with him. He digested well, he's full of energy, obviously full of muscles, and he's constantly lean. So, uh, in average, 10 pounds of, of red meat, his preferable choice of red meat would be horse meat. Uh, he would eat beef as well, but uh, horse was the... He preferred horse meat. Uh, apparently, he said... It has much higher uh, concentration of iron and B12, and I can feel I'm, I'm, I'm getting much better pump, and I'm much harder when I eat that. So uh, there are people who, there are a lot of questions that I receive regarding the video on Serge Nubre's diet, and uh, some people just, uh, just think that this is absolutely, you know, wrong diet and they that, that that diet will kill you and it will give you this and that uh, obviously <clears throat> if you think like that obviously you must be very ignorant because these diets they are not doing that they are actually helping people to lose body fat uh, some people uh, compared it to uh, and to uh, ketogenic diet well uh, meat and eggs on their own they no, they're not necessarily ketogenic diet because ketogenic diet requires you to eat about 70% of fat in your diet. Now, if you look at meat, for example, meat is about 18 to 20%, depending which meat, uh, 18 to 20%, uh, even more, chicken breast, 24% protein, and uh, 5 to 10% fat. Uh, if you look at chicken, for example, there is a chicken breast, there is no fat at all. So, is not high in fat. So, these diets are probably 70%, 75% protein and 25, 20, 25% fat. Uh, I would call this type of diet something else. So, these diets are not really ketogenic diet, but there is rather something that I, I would like to call gluconeogenic diet. Now, there is a process in the liver which is called gluconeogenesis, and... Uh, this is the procedure that through which liver uh, produces glucose from protein. I don't know if anybody of you has ever done a ketostic test. Uh, if, ever, and if you ever try to, for example, deplete, like I had to do so many times, as I competed uh, 46 times, so we, we used to... Comp uh, try to completely deplete glycogen a few days before the show in order to carb load. Um, but in order to get into that ketosis, ketosis, ketosis you, need to, you need to perform the test, which is called keto test. 
So there is something like a keto stick, little paper stick that you put in the urine in the morning, and then once that 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 uh, stick turns into dark red, that means that you are really in ketosis. Now, if you tried ever to do this, and that means that you've been on three, four, five, six days, literally zero carbs, you're eating protein, only maybe a bit of fat, and you're training twice a day, high reps, lots of sets, hoping you're going to get into ketosis, and every next day you wake up and that stick is just orange and is not red and is not turning red and you're not eating any carbohydrates, meaning that you are not in ketosis. So that obviously tells you that something is happening in the body, that you are not breaking fat, that you're breaking something else. Now you're breaking glycogen. Now for the, all these people who come with those questions, well, if I don't eat carbs, how am I going to have glycogen in my muscles? This is how you're going to have glycogen in my muscles. This is how all the carnivores in nature have glycogen in their muscles. Look at cheetah, lions, tigers. They don't eat carbohydrates. They eat meat. And they, they don't look to me uh, glycogen depleted. What at all? So if you have the fastest uh, animal who can run uh, 120 kilometers in, in 10 seconds per, per hour, uh, how how can that be possible without glycogen? So where does glycogen come from? Obviously, there are other processes in the body which body is, is using in order to store glycogen. One of those is called gluconeogenesis. So these diets, which are based on high percentage of protein and a relatively moderate percentage of, of body fat, are gluconeogenic diets. They are not ketogenic diets, right? For ketogenic diet, you need it 70% fat, 30% protein. Now, this is this explains actually how is the post, how is possible that that Sergio Bray used to eat such a high amount of protein and still be able to train with high intensity and uh, for for 45 minutes literally non-stop. So this is not something that is going to kill you. It is actually much more if you, if we consider uh, evolutionary biology. This is something which uh, which human body is much more used to. Uh, uh, perform on on this type of fuels on these macronutrients rather than on carbohydrates. When people say carbohydrates is the most preferable choice of uh, uh, energy for the body, no, this is not true. They are not most preferable. They are the easiest because for the body is very easy to use carbs for energy. But if if you follow this uh, gluconeogenic diet, you will still feed your muscles with glycogen but you will benefit from relatively normal level of insulin throughout the day because you won't have those insulin spikes which are caused by eating carbohydrates. So whenever you eat carbohydrates, high-carbohydrate meal, your insulin will go up, it will wipe out all your glucose because your glycogen stores are more or less always full, they will, that glucose will end up into through the liver into the fat stores. So basically... This is why these diets are beneficial. Now, I'm not saying to you should be eating 10, 10 pounds of meat a day, but I'm just trying to explain to you how Sergio Bre managed to reach relatively uh, old age. I mean, he died on the age of 72, but we don't know from what. But he looked extremely well, and he was very good, although he didn't eat 10 pounds of meat a day in, in, in his 70s. Um, also, the other videos in which people... In which people um, love them and they love to hear this like the guy called uh, Drake Santiago said thank you uh, very much Nash for this video more and more people over the past few years have become convinced about how a high carbohydrate intake is particularly fattening however one of the communities that seems to be most reluctant to reduce carbohydrates is athletic community which still holds to this erroneous belief that carbohydrates are necessary for a high volume of exercise. So, yes, I mean, uh, I know people <clears throat> People are obsessed with carbs. First of all, carbs are cheap. Second, they are tasty. Third, they are easy to convert into energy. So they tick a lot of boxes in everyday lives. But, uh, yes, you can perform. I mean, my <clears throat> the, I, the reason why I want to talk about all this 
extraordinary people, bodybuilders or whoever they are, is because they did not succumb to certain rules or, or, or trends or beliefs. Like, uh, I remember when I did my uh, advanced personal training course and uh, some professor of nutrition from Bristol University came and he was lecturing on nutrition and he said, athletes have to eat 70%, the healthiest diet for athletes, 70% carbs, 20% protein, 10% fat. I mean, this is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard in my life. So when, when he finished, he asked, do you have any questions? I stood up and said, can I ask you a question? He says, yes. I said, can you explain to me, again, 70% carbs, 20% protein, 10% fat? He said, yeah, absolutely. And I said to him, well, I, then I was about 115 kgs in quite good shape. I was competing then in those days. And I said to him, look, I don't eat any carbs. And he said to me, that's not possible. You cannot be as big as you are in this kind of shape if you're not eating carbs. I said, I don't eat carbs. He said, I came this morning. It was 9 o'clock. I said, at 7, I had about 7, 8 scrambled eggs and some bacon. And here I am now to, in, in your lecture. So I didn't put any single carb in my diet. I said, my next meal will probably be, uh, I'll probably grab some um, roast chicken in, in Tesco or wherever. And then... Uh, I would eat probably the same thing uh, later on during the day, maybe put some vegetables. And that's it. I said, I don't eat any carbs. And he said to me, this is not possible. So I said, how is it not possible? I'm still here in front of you. What, I mean, what do you mean it's not possible? Everybody started laughing. You see, this is the reason why I want you to see these videos. So you allow yourself an opportunity to doubt. So you need to try different things. If you start lowering your carbohydrates and increasing your protein, training four or five, even six times a week, you, I'm 100% I'm positive that you will experience changes like you never experienced them before. Now, if, if you ask me, did I try this diet of 10 pounds of meat a day? Well, I, I tried, but not 10 pounds of meat a day because I couldn't eat that much. But I remember days when I would eat three, uh, three to four pounds of uh, meat, mixed meat and chicken. Uh, the only difference is that I, uh, Sergio Bread wouldn't eat anything else with it. I always add some vegetables because I feel much better if I have some vegetables with my meat or my chicken or my liver. <clears throat> uh, I feel that I, I digest better and I absorb better. I remember when I asked Renu Bread about vegetables, he laughed at me and said to me, uh, uh, I'm not a rabbit. He said, you know, you should, you should, you want to be like a lion rather than a rabbit. Fair enough, this is what he said. But I personally, every time I eat in every meal, maybe not the first meal in the morning, but in my next uh, three or four meals, whatever I have during the day, I always have vegetables. First of all, vegetables, uh, especially if they're not cooked, if they're raw, they're full of minerals. And minerals, and, uh, the other name for minerals, they're coenzymes. So they are actually precursors of enzymes. Your body will produce easier and more enzymes it will be more efficient, which will uh, further digest food better for you. So in a way, yes, vegetables help you digest food better. So if that is the case, I mean, obviously, there is no second thought about it. Every protein source, especially meat, should be going with vegetables. I usually, the only, only meal in the day when I don't have vegetables is morning when I have uh, eggs, whole eggs, maybe four or five whole eggs. I may have some... Uh, uh, cooked ham, which I cook myself, or bacon, or maybe sometimes cottages, and that's it. So I don't, I don't, I simply don't like eating vegetables with uh, uh, eating vegetables with with my eggs. This is why I don't eat them. But I, uh, I do not like to eat meat on its own. <clears throat> I know people who try to eat meat uh, on its own a few a few times per day, and they were fine. They really enjoyed it. Uh, they, they perform fantastically. I'm not necessarily one of them, but again, what I want you to take out from this video is just another option, another possibility, another opportunity, so you can uh, you can experiment, right? Don't get don't get locked into some systems or trends or beliefs or patterns. So you know, if everybody else is doing this, I'm going to do because you know this is the way to do. You know, all the guys in the gym eat carbs with protein, and uh, I'm going to do that. <clears throat> well, there is a lot of reasons maybe why you should not mix carbs and protein together, 
But that, that will be the subject to one of my next uh, videos. I will be talking about uh, Iron Guru, Vinj Gironda himself, and uh, his, his famous diet. And I will then explain to you uh, benefits of his diet protocol and his beliefs, his teachings. So uh, you, will, you will have an opportunity to enrich your knowledge of nutrition even further. And eventually, by experiment, try to find out what suits you the best. I hope you like this video. Uh, once again, thank you very much for sending so many comments and questions. I really appreciate that. I mean, more questions you send, uh, more of these videos will follow. Uh, I like when we disagree and agree and we have all different types of kind of opinions, but this is why we are here. And uh, if, again, if you like the video, please subscribe and send me your comments. I, I'm really, really grateful for that. And uh, see you in the next video.